Hi, I'm Tom, and this is one of my eight Kitbash Wraith Knights from my dream army, an Eldar Wraith host. If you haven't seen my previous two videos, check them out. I show you how I kitbashed eight Wraith Knights, six Wraith Lords, two Wraith Seers, and 30 plus Wraith Guard. In this video, I'll show you how I add battle damage to my minis and show you my take and vision on what I imagine Grimdark Eldar and Wraithbone to look like. You could also use this technique for painting marble. This is my comprehensive guide on how to make a marble effect using mostly spray cans. I followed a load of different guides from YouTube and almost all of them caused me issues. First step is battle damage. I used a file, some sanding sticks, a knife and some drill bits. I used the sanding stick to get into the crevices of where the mould lines were, add some random scratches, divot and texture to the top of the armour. I used the drill bit to bore little holes and scratches on the surface. and the sanding sticks to add some rough texture to the surface. I used the knife to scratch and score some marks on the armour as well. With the head, I ensured I avoided any damage to the visor or the cockpit glass. Then for the marble technique, you want some cheap baby wipes or face wipes. These ones here are fibrous but not made of paper. You pull them apart, stretch them out and they go all into a web. I've got a selection of spray cans set up in the garage, covered everything, all the furniture with cardboard. This army will be painted in the Ayandan colour scheme. So for the helm, I'm using sunset yellow, some retributor armour and some acrag blue. Blue tack the head to a cap. Make sure you shake up your cans. I did this on the hottest day of the year as well. Test the paints coming out. Completely covered the helm in the gold. I also completely covered the arm as well. With the yellow, I'm aiming for spots. I'm not going to cover completely cover the gold. I want some of the gold showing and some of the yellow showing. So the arm, I used again did the same technique, some patches and spots of different colours. When the helm was dry, got one of the baby wipes, wrapped it up in the baby wipe. and then sprayed it with the blue paint. When you're doing this, you want to do thin passes. Did the same for the arm and shield. And there's my poor man's crocs. So the first guide I watched, the first guide I watched said you should let the paint completely dry before peeling the wipe off. So I did this. And as soon as I started peeling it off, I realized something's gone desperately wrong here. I followed the guide exactly. I uh, did thin layers, but the wipe is embedded into the, into the paint. It's adhered to the top surface. As I'm peeling it off here, it's leaving behind lots of little fibers, which is not what you want. Yes. Yeah. 
So to save this one, I just used a cloth and a bit of water and rubbed off all the fibers. It took a while, but it's I cleared, I managed to get them all off. Stay till the end of the video, I'll show you the perfected and best way of doing this. So you can see there some marble effects, pretty good. And the same happened on the shield and arm. Again, it was thin passes of paint. I let it dry completely. And it's completely f***ed it. Excuse my language, but what the actual f Try that again. So I stripped it, painted it again. And then another guy I watched said to use a gloss varnish, so I used some hard coat. Painted gloss varnish all over. I fully let these dry in between layers as well. Tried it again and wrapped it up. Thin layer of yellow. Let it dry. And same result. WTF, bruh. A little bit better, but it's still sticking, still leaving lots of fibers behind. Um, but this one's a bit more manageable, but it shouldn't look like this. Again, cleaned it up. This is just a paint test after all, I'm not painting them all right now. You can see here, so the effect is quite nice, but it was covered in fibers. Then I thought I'd try doing a a thin down and an yellow wash all over. Did a one to one mix with water. Painted it all over the arm and, and shield. You can see here this texture on the paint as well. I then also used this and yellow to brighten the sunset yellow and really made the yellow pop. And then masked off the yellow arm and thought I'd try a blue bit, so again, baby wipe on. You clean the baby wipes with water in between, let them dry as well. So this one again is sticking a little bit. I didn't wear a glove this time, if you can tell. There's little fibers everywhere. As I said, every guide I've watched says to do it these these ways. Went over this one with a, a lighter blue. Just clean my hand up. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. There we go. Painted it all the way to the end just to see what it would look like. I didn't like it, so I'm gonna strip it again. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. Just a bit of isopropyl and a toothbrush. Right, third go. I'm going to try not, not letting the paint dry, is my theory. I think if you just peel the wipe off straight away, it won't have a chance to stick. And voila! This has probably been drying for about 10 seconds before I start peeling it off. No fibres whatsoever. I gave it a second coat after it had dried. Again, peeled it off straight away. And again, no fibres. So I think we're on something here. Don't let the paint dry. Sprayed over the top with contrast and in yellow. This is just straight from the pot and not watered this down. Again, I've not wrapped the uh, wipe around it either. Peel it off. And there you go, no fibres left behind. It's subtle, but you can see there is yellow, uh, brighter yellow streaks going through this. Now I'll mask it up. Again, just put the wipe over it. I've wrapped it around tightly. Some blue, and then peeled it off straight away. And again. One or two fibres, nothing in comparison to what it was before. And it's not embedded into the, the paint either. Uh, 
and then also decided to add a lighter blue Go. Let it dry. That looks awesome. You can obviously do this the other way around, so use a dark base colour and then a lighter colour on top. I then use the gold to paint some extra veins going through. I also did this with the yellow to brighten the, the and in yellow to brighten the, the yellow areas as well. Painted gold into the runes. Then made a simple brown oil wash with some white spirit. That's the right consistency. The reason I'm using brown, it darkens down the, the yellow and cream and brown colours in the armour and also runs into the battle damage and recesses. Also over the blue as well, fills all the crevices of the gold and makes it pop. And it's about 20 times cheaper than Agrax Earthshade. Paint the whole model in this and wick away any large areas. And that's what it looks like when it's washed. When the spirits in the wash have evaporated, get one of these cotton buds or a Q-tip and start cleaning away some of the excess oil. Still want it in the crevices. I wet one of the cotton buds and dabbed it on the areas where the colour was brightest as well. So the light blue, yellow and gold areas. Reason this, I want the colours to really pop there, so. The white spirit reactivates the, the oil and removes it. Then the helm I painted gold in the, the crest. I've marked off the area around the visor. Sprayed it with this glue. You can see here I'm drying it off with my airbrush. Just no paint coming out, just using air to apply a second layer. And then the next color I used was a fluorescent pink from AK Interactive thinned down and just sprayed it over the top of the visor and again just dried it off as well. That looks awesome. This helm here I've, I've left a lot of yellow in it but when I, uh, I'm going to repaint it and add a lot more blue to it like on the shield. I said these are just test models to get my techniques down before I paint my entire army. And there you go, that's the test, it's finished. Like a mottled Yandan marble. She said you can use this technique for marble, rocks even. It's pretty good for a quick, like, 30 minute paint test. If this guide helps you at all, please comment, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. Maybe even consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons, you're absolute legends. Special thanks to my latest Patreon supporters, Dante Cockburn and Ben Hannon. Hail to you, champion. I also have affiliate links in the video description below to all the products I use from Element Games, where you can also get 15-25% off Warhammer and other hobby supplies. Thank you.